fill my heart with your word that I may praise your name and I'll give glory to thee, my God. In this video, we're going to talk about a feature of prophecy called foreshortening. That sounds complicated, but it's actually quite simple, so stick with me. Authors typically illustrate prophetic foreshortening with a picture where an object like a tree can be seen in the foreground, but other details are also visible in the background, for example, a forest. The foreground details are events that will take place in the near future in the prophecy, and the background details are events that will take place in the distant future. The idea is that in just one picture, which represents the overall prophecy, a vast amount of space, representing time, exists between the foreground, near fulfillments, and the background, distant fulfillments. As a result, in the same prophecy, we might expect to find a fulfillment of events in a few years, but also events that may be fulfilled many years later. While this concept is valid, there are a few important points that we must never forget. The first point of importance is that prophetic foreshortening does not present a double meaning for the details within a prophecy. We'll talk more about double meanings in our next video. In the typical illustration, you have that tree in the foreground and trees in the background. No one in their right mind would believe the tree in the foreground is actually one of the trees in the background. Instead, the concept of foreshortening allows us to understand that a single prophecy may cover a great span of time, just as a picture may present a great deal of distance. In Daniel 2, we have four kingdoms prophesied before God's kingdom is established. Some take the last kingdom in the statue and admit that it is fulfilled in the Roman Empire, but then demand that there is a double sense where the Roman Empire must be revived at some time in the future. Concerning double fulfillment, Milton Terry pointed out that this introduces an element of uncertainty and confusion into biblical interpretation. The minor prophets frequently contain a blurring of time in fulfillment. This never presents the possibility that any given prophecy will be partially fulfilled and then find a fuller fulfillment at a later date. We'll talk about this more in our next video, as I pointed out. A second point of importance is that prophetic foreshortening does not change the meanings of words associated with time. Interpreters, on occasion, need to get their interpretation into a text by stretching out its time frame. Blocking their way is an indication in the text that the time will be short rather than long. The word immediately, for example, should never be interpreted to include thousands of years. That would be confusing. A third point of importance is that prophetic foreshortening must never be seen where an inspired author presents a fulfillment that would forbid it. Scripture never sees prophecy as partially fulfilled. If Scripture says it's fulfilled, then it's fulfilled. The concept of fulfillment, fulfilled prophecy is that something has been brought to its fullness. In this case, the prophecy has seen a, comp a completion of that toward which it was looking. If not, then there's nothing made more sure about any prophecy, as Peter pointed out in 2 Peter 1 and verse 19, because every prophecy has the potential of containing something that we must still wait to discover. Without God explicitly telling us that a double intention exists, we mustn't let our minds consider the possibility. Well, thank you for joining me for this study. We'll go into more detail on double fulfillment in our next video. It's a popular concept in prophetic interpretation, so we'll look at a few proposed examples and see what's really going on in those instances.